What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek. And today we're talking about Power Automate and the Office 365 Outlook Connector. And we're gonna look at the action, which is Get Events V4. So Get Events allows you to search a specific calendar and return back events in that calendar. So this is a little bit like the uh, Get Event Viewer Calendar, uh, but this, is, this works slightly differently and that's what we're gonna go through today. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate. I have an Office 365 Outlook Connector flow here, and I've got a trigger for when an event is added, updated, or deleted. That's looking at my default calendar, which is just called Calendar. So that's how it's going to trigger. Then I click on New Step. Then I can type Office 365, Office 365, find the connector, and we can scroll down until we get to uh, get uh, where is Get Events V4. Get Events V4, there we go. So the required parameter here is the calendar ID. So I can either get this from as dynamic content from the trigger uh, or another way, uh, or I can just select it from this list. I'm just gonna select it from this list. I can click on show advanced options and I've got a few different options here. So I've got the same ones that we kind of see from other, uh, other triggers and other actions as well. So we've got filter query. So we could do an O data filter query um, on results to return. So filtering and bringing back only the results where that query matches. We can order by, so we can order by a specific column, um, maybe alphabetically, maybe loads high, something like that. Again, using O data. The top count, so this is the number of records to bring back. So in this instance, I'm just gonna choose five. I don't wanna bring back them all. And we also have a skip count, which means we can skip over a certain number of entries before we return them back. So I'm going to test this flow out now. So we'll click on test. I'll form the trigger action. We'll hit test. And once this is running, I will switch over to my Outlook calendar. So we'll switch to Outlook. You can see I've got a few events at the moment. So today is the 10th of August. I could put an event in for tomorrow. A uh, new cool event for flow, flow video. And we can hit save. Notice that I have events both in the future and in the past as well. If I go back to my flow, I can see the flow runs successfully, which is good. And we just need the screen to load up. There we go. And we can see the first one we get here is the new cool events for Flow Video. So the start is this time and the end is this time. So this is the, the one that we've just, um, we've just created now. So we've got that one is the first one and we can see the create on time uh, was um, here. So we created it, uh, well it's, it's out because it's UTC. Um, it's pretty summer time at the moment, uh, but it's actually about uh, five past nine at night. If I scroll down a bit further to get to the next object in this array, we have this new event for testing events. And we can see the created on date here was, um, again, a few minutes ago uh, or an hour ago. Um, was it an hour ago? Yeah, an hour ago. Um, no, 15 minutes ago, sorry. I'm, I think I'm going to a few minutes ago. So that's fine, so that, that's there. And then scrolling down a bit further. Uh, there, is a, there is a point to this we can see this was again created about 10, 15 minutes ago. So what this action actually does is it returns things to you by default in the latest created on order. Now we do have the option for order by, so we could order this by the created on date or um, the, you know, the start date uh, or the start time or the end time. Uh, but by default, it just returns back all of the entries in your calendar via when they were first created. So that's an important thing to know about this action is that it, it, by default, if you do not specify an OData query if uh, for order and buy or any sort of other um, you know, filtering, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go off and it's going to return them to you on created on order or created by order. So that's one interesting thing to know. And similarly, like we saw with the other video on um, uh, on actions, so Office 365, uh, where is it? Get calendar view of events. 
This one actually allows you to specify in a start time and an end time to actually uh, look at in your query. So this is probably a better one if you want to see uh, it from a, a time range that you may know. Get events is basically the right, okay, return everything to me uh, and I want to maybe filter it by this or not filter it by this. And then you can get those lists back. So two things that kind of work in a similar way. Um, they, they do have different uses and use cases. So um, as always, I want to know what you guys use get events for, maybe over get calendar view of events. Uh, maybe you don't know the start time, the end time. Those are required parameters and that's why I use get events. But as always, I want to know how you guys work because I always like to improve my own knowledge. So let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already hit, hit that subscribe button and stay subscribed to my YouTube channel, stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.